The coolest part of the Artificer class is the infusions, or at least I think so. There's a lot of options you have with this, and the rules can be a bit confusing. Today I'll talk about how infusions work, and which ones are good. Welcome to Pack Tactics, Go Go Gadget Spellroth Tattoo. Let's read the feature. At second level, you gain the ability to imbue mundane items with certain magical infusions. The magic items you create with this feature are effective prototype of permanent items. You start off knowing four infusions and learn more during your class progression. Every level you can replace one infusion with another. This is kind of similar to a spell list and from this list you can choose what you want to use for your item infusions. Continuing on, whenever you finish a long rest you can touch a non-magical object and imbue it with one of your artificer infusions, turning it into a magic item. An infusion works on on only certain kinds of objects, as specified in the infusions description. If the item requires attunement, you can attune yourself to it the instant you infuse the item. If you decide to attune to the item later, you must do so using the normal process for attunement. Your infusion remains in an item indefinitely, but when you die, the infusion vanishes after a number of days have passed equal to your intelligence modifier. The infusion also vanishes if you give up your knowledge of the the infusion for another one. You can infuse more than one non-magical object at the end of a long rest. The maximum number of objects appears in the infused items column of the artificer table. You must touch each of the objects and each of your infusions can be in only one object at a time. Moreover, no object can bear more than one of your infusions at a time. If you try to exceed your maximum number of infusions, the oldest infusion immediately ends and the new infusion applies. If an infusion ends an item that contains other things like a bag of holding, its contents harmlessly appear in and around its space. This is important to note. Each of your infusions can be in only one object at a time. In other words, each infusion you know slash have learned or whatever can only be used once at a time. By default, each infusion can also only be learnt once. Artificer infusions are extraordinary process that rapidly turn a non-magical object into a magic item. The description of each of the following infusions details the type of object that can receive it, along with whether the resulting magic items require attunement. Some infusions specify a minimum artificer level. You can't learn such an infusion until you are at least that level. Unless an infusion's description says otherwise, you can't learn an infusion more than once. So to summarize, you get to choose different infusions up to a certain number. And then each day you can infuse a certain number of items up to your maximum number of infusions. Any excess will become mundane. One interesting quirk is that items with charges are better off being re-infused if you have the opportunity to do so. Like for example, the armor of magical strength infusion. It has six charges. The armor regains 1d6 expended charges daily at dawn. After a long rest, just re-infuse the item to refresh it completely. No need to roll that 1d6 to charge it. That's silly. That's basically it for infusions. I know, it was quite a lot, and I hope I didn't put you to sleep. Me, 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 me. So to wake you up, this video is sponsored by the Book of Spirits. Heavily inspired by Dragon Age and Stormlight Archive. This book brings your 5e realm to a whole new realm of magic. Fight or befriend ethereal creatures in a realm where emotions and memories invoke magic. There's over 200 pages full of content. There's over 50 new monsters to slay. Over 7 new subclasses and species to play. 3 new adventures involving the spirit realm. Over 30 new boons and banes and much more. This book has a ton of new mechanics like conduit. This is a new class that lets you fuse with spirits to empower yourself and unleash mystical powers. Stand in the front line, support your allies with your attuned spirits buffs. 
and punish foes that dare attack you with your spirit lash. Cool, do you need to talk about the best feature, the vibe system? Gator, it's called Resonance System, and it changes the tide of battle. Roleplay your character's emotions to strengthen or weaken nearby spirits. This system lends itself to cathartic moments where heroes defeat adversaries by overcoming their own mental barriers and find hidden strength within themselves. This will get your power gamers and optimizers to roleplay for once. Correct, so what? What are you waiting for? The Book of Spirits is now live on Kickstarter. Step beyond the veil with infectious glee. I highly recommend it. This is an adventure you'll remember for years. Back to the video, now let's talk about highlights. There's quite a lot of options like I mentioned before, and going through literally everything takes forever. That makes the video too long. But if you want to learn about literally every option, Tabletop Builds has an Artificer Class Guide, which I'll link down down below. But first, we need to talk about Replicate Magic Item, the most special infusion option there is. Yes, there's more to read. Using this infusion, you can replicate a particular magic item. You can learn this infusion multiple times. Each time you do so, choose a magic item that you can make with it, picking from the Replicate Items tables. A table's title tells you the level you must be in the class to choose an item from the table. Alternatively, you can choose the magic item from among the common magic items in the game, not including potions or scrolls. This rule is very special from the others. In this one, you can actually choose to learn multiple times. You could even choose the same magic item multiple times. That's very important. But Koopal, that sounds like cheating! Not really, the wording is quite clear, and they even changed it from the last iteration they had in the UA. There it said, you can learn this infusion multiple times. Each time you do so, choose a different magic item that you can make with it. This is very powerful, and some of the best options for magic item infusions are found in the list of magic items you can replicate. Having multiple pipes of haunting, which you can learn at level 6, is incredibly powerful. You have three charges each. It's an action to cause each creature within 30 feet of you to become frightened for one minute. And the DC is a 15 wisdom save. There is a repeat save, but still, 30 feet AoE, 3 charges of this, and that high of a DC is insanely good. 2 bags of holding, which you can learn at level 2, allows you to bomb enemies by having a familiar put one bag inside the other to transport nearby creatures to the astral plane. This is a no save 10 foot AoE banish, so if you want to take out Tarasks at level 2, this is it. This is how you do it. I've already made a video about it, it was one of my first videos ever. Be warned though, I don't think your DM will allow this, but if they do, then this is an option you have. And finally, I'd like to point out Spellroth tattoos, with first level spells. The item isn't on the tables, but it is a common magic item, and it isn't a potion or a scroll, so it is a valid option. You can cast spells that aren't even on your spell list with this, which is a nice way to get access to something like Gift of Alacrity, or you can give everyone fine familiars, that's very unique. There's even some tech here that I think is worth mentioning, but the tattoo is good even without this ruling. The item says, once the tattoo is there, you can cast its spell, requiring no material components. The tattoo glows faintly while you cast a spell and for the spell's duration. Once the spell ends, the tattoo vanishes from your skin. Gift of Alacrity lasts 8 hours. This means that the tattoo disappears after 8 hours. It also says you can cast the spell while it is there. That means with just one one tattoo, you can cast spells with a longer duration multiple times. But again, be warned though, your DM might not allow this. But if they do, again, this is an option you have. There's also some other items which are good that modify your ability scores, like Amulet of Health. Headband of Intelligence, Belt of Giant Strength, and the Gauntlet of Ogre Power. Of course, the winged boots are also fantastic for very obvious reasons. In general though, Pipes of Haunting are basically the best option overall. It's so powerful that I highly recommend holding on to multiple of them. As for the normal infusions, the repeating shots available at level 2 can be quite useful. The Mind Sharpener is massive for concentration protection, and the spell 
Refueling Ring, available at level 6, adds to you or someone else's spell slots. This is obviously insanely useful. There's also some generic ones that make your weapons magical or your armor magical. I recommend looking at those as well. I really like the infusion system for artificers. I'm a big fan of options in my RPG game. But there are some options that are too strong compared to other options. But nevertheless, the game isn't hard. You can pick whatever you want. Infusions let you make a ton of different artificers that are mechanically very fun to play. Similar to warlocks with their invocations. So I highly recommend exploring your options. I just share the best stuff because this is an optimization channel. End of video. I hope I earned your subscription and maybe your support on Patreon. If I didn't earn your subscription, then I have to optimize better. Which is fine, by the way. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye! Bye!